Do 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 do. Tech by Tips. On today's topic, uh, the Docker file, what it is and how to use it. So the first question to answer here is, uh, what is a Docker file? Uh, well, a Docker file is a set of instructions uh, to build a Docker image. You can think of it as a recipe. It adds layers together to create a delicious application serving image. Uh, it is a simple text document that contains all of the commands that normally a user would have to type in the command line to set up an environment uh, ready to serve an application or service. Uh, the Docker file, uh, Docker file is consumed by the Docker build command. Uh, that's its only purpose. It's not used really anywhere else. Uh, when you run the Docker build command, it'll automatically look for a file named Docker file with capital D uh, in our working directory if we don't specify, uh, specify a file to use. Back in the days of servers, uh, we needed to create scripts that would set up our machines, be it real machines or virtual machines, to successfully run our applications. But in our current time, we have moved away from fully fledged servers into containers because uh, this use less resources because they eliminate redundant and unnecessary files and processes and the images are immediately ready to run our application without any additional configuration usually. A properly built Docker file will yield us a ready to use image that we can deploy in Docker or Kubernetes. Uh, Docker files uh, have a very specific syntax. Uh, you can have a comment, for example, that describes to the user what the line does. Uh, it is always a a good to comment your code as it can help you and others understand what it does. So comments are uh, ignored by Docker so you don't have to worry about them. Uh, underneath that comment line then comes the actual meat of the line, an instruction and arguments for this instruction. An instruction is like a verb. It tells Docker that something has to be done. Uh, it, it is usually capitalized so that we can differentiate it from the arguments and the comments. Uh, the arguments tell Docker what needs to be done or, or what needs to be used for that specific action. Sometimes our lines can be very long and difficult to read, so we can split them into several lines using the slash for better uh, readability. Uh, so, important uh, considerations here about uh, Docker files are uh, that Docker runs the instructions in order. So make sure that your instructions make orderly sense. Uh, a Docker file must always start with a from instruction. Uh, when running a build, Docker is adding a new layer for each line in the Docker file. So think of it as if you're building a sandwich or burger. Each uh, command it's a layer that you add on top until you build your sandwich or burger uh, the more layers that you add the bigger that the image gets and ideally you want to have the uh, minimal size possible for the image so you only want to have all that is actually required to run your application or service uh, so now let's get to the docker file instructions there's a full document in the docker.com website referenced down here but we're going to go quickly over you know the instructions so the first instruction that we're going to talk about is the from instruction uh, this should always be the first instruction in a docker file it specifies which image will be our base also known as a parent image and uh, you need to know which underlying operating system you will use as other instructions will be impacted by this uh, for example, if you're using Ubuntu or Debian, your package manager is APT. But if you use Alpine, it, it will be APK. So this image has to be a valid and available image as it will be pulled in the beginning of the process from a registry. This registry could be a public or a private registry. Uh, the argument for this instruction in this example is um, Alpine colon latest. This means that we're using Alpine as the operating system for our image and the colon is used to denote that a tag is beginning um, and what that tag is going to be. 
In our case, we're looking for the latest version tag. This tag can be uh, many things. You need to check which is more convenient to you uh, from the repository. It could be, for example, a version or it could be an architecture name. Uh, note that the tag is optional and it could also be omitted. Uh, additionally, we can specify the platform to pull using the dash dash platform flag. For example, and this is in, we're showing here that we're specifically requesting the Linux AMD64 architecture. Uh, the second instruction that we will take a look at is the label instruction. Uh, this instruction adds metadata to the image that we're building. Uh, this metadata is specified in the form of a key and a value, and the values must always be surrounded by double quotes. Uh, an image can have more than one label, for example, the version, the maintainer, and a description. Uh, your image will inherit the labels from the parent image and any image built from yours will inherit your labels. But if you specify a label that was previously added, then your value will overwrite that previous label. Uh, you can view the labels of an image by running the docker image inspect command. Uh, then the third instruction that we'll take a look at is the env instructions that's short for environment uh, this instruction sets environment variables uh, they are also key value pairs so you're assigning a value to a variable with a specific key name keys are usually capitalized um, these values will be in the environment for all instructions that follow in the build stage so you can set them in multiple lines or in one line like the second example here uh, the variable will persist when a container is run from that image. Uh, you can view these values by running the command docker inspect. And this can also be changed when you run the docker run command. Uh, let's take a look at the run instruction. This instruction will execute any command and save its resulting state as a new layer. Uh, we will continue building our image from the result of this command. Uh, there are two ways to write a run instruction. The first two are examples uh, that show the shell form. And the last one is the exec form, which is short for executable. If you're building from scratch, uh, so it means that you have no base image, it is better to use the exec form as the base image doesn't have any default shell to execute commands. Uh, the, let's take a look at the add instruction. This instruction copies files, directories, or remote file URLs to a destination in the file system of the image. It can copy one or more files in one go. Uh, the source paths are interpreted from the source of the execution context. And the command has two forms, right? The first is recommended if your paths do not contain spaces. And if your path does have spaces, then the second option is recommended because the quotes escape the spaces right uh, you can change the owner and the permissions when you add files as shown in the first example uh, let's take a look at the copy instruction uh, this instruction copies new files or directories from a source and add them to the file system of the container at a destination path it's just like the add command it can copy multiple files or directories to a destination and the command has two forms the first is recommended if you don't use spaces in your path, and the second one if you do have spaces in your path. You can change the ownership and permission also when you add files as shown in the example. Uh, let's take a look at the enter point instruction. Uh, the purpose of this instruction is to configure the executable that the container will run. Uh, only one entry point will be used, so if you put the instruction more than one time, only the last one will have an effect. Uh, there are two ways to write an entry point instruction. Uh, the first example shows the shell form, and the second example shows the executable form, or exec. Uh, for this, you would also use a CMD or command instruction after the entry point to provide arguments, usually. Uh, let's take a look at this command instruction, CMD. Uh, the purpose of this instruction is to provide defaults for an executing container. Uh, there are three ways to write a command instruction. The first two are examples that show the shell form. And this, I mean the first, the second and the third 
examples show the executable form, the exec form. It can specify the executable to run as the second example shows, or just arguments as the third example shows. If you go with option three, then you need an entry point instruction first. It means that the container will start with the entry point and use the arguments provided in the command option to execute. Uh, let's take a look at the expose instruction now. Uh, this instruction lets Docker know that the container is going to listen on a specific network port at runtime. You can specify if the port is listening in the TCP or UDP protocol, and if you don't specify, it'll default to TCP. Uh, this instruction does not publish the port though. That is done at the moment of running the image. It just specifies on which port the container is internally uh, listening on. Uh, let's take a look at the volume instruction. Uh, this instruction creates a mount point with the specified name and marks it as holding externally mounted volumes from either the host or other containers. Uh, the value can be a JSON array or a text with multiple arguments. When this container is created, the volume gets created and the container mounts it. Uh, next, let's take a look at the user instruction. Uh, this instruction sets the username or the user ID that will be used as the default for the remainder of the build stage. It can also specify the group to use. This uh, user will be used to execute all the run instructions at runtime, will also execute the entry points and CMD instructions. So all your runs, the entry point and the command are gonna be executed as this user. Uh, let's take a look at the work there, uh, direct instruction. Uh, this instruction sets the working directory for a run, command, enter point, copy, and add instructions that follow it. It can be used multiple times in a Docker file, uh, and it kind of behaves like the CD command in the terminal, so it works relative to the current location. If it is not specified, then it will default to the root, which is the slash path. Uh, let's take a look now at the arg instruction. Uh, this instruction defines a variable that users can pass at build time to the docker build command. If these are defined but not used, then docker will show you a warning. Uh, you can have many of these in a docker file, and if you add a value, it will become a default. So if you don't specify a value, it'll use that. Uh, I mean, if you don't specify the value uh, later, right? It'll use the default that you have in your Docker file. Next, we'll look at the on build instruction. Uh, this instruction adds a trigger to the image that is to be executed at a later time, when your image is going to be used as a base image for another build. Uh, it'll execute as if it had been inserted after the from instruction in the next person's Docker file, right? Any build instruction can be registered as a trigger. Uh, this is useful if you're building an image which will be used as a base to build other images. Uh, let's take a look at the stop signal instruction. This instruction sets the system call signal that will be sent to the container to exit. Uh, the signal can be in the format sig and then a name. For example, sig kill. Next, let's take a look at the health check instruction. Uh, this instruction tells Docker how to test the container to see if it is working. This can be used to detect issues with the containers. Uh, when a container has a health check, it has an additional status uh, besides the normal status. Uh, it'll start with the starting initial status, and then when it successfully completes a health check, it becomes healthy as its status. But if it fails the check, then its status becomes unhealthy. Uh, the options shown at the bottom are the values that can be given to the instruction. Uh, let's take a look at the shell instruction. This instruction allows the default shell form of commands to be overridden. This is very useful on Windows since there are two very different native shells, the command prompt and the PowerShell. It must be written in JSON format. And this instruction can be used multiple times in a Docker file. And when you uh, write it, you're overwriting the previous use of it. Uh, it'll also affect the following instructions. 
let's take a look at the here documents instruction. Uh, this instruction allows you to uh, write a set of shell commands that would normally be like in a script and pass it to the run or copy instructions. It'll consider anything between the EOT markers as commands to execute. Keep in mind that we want our Docker file to be as small as possible. Uh, we only want the bare minimum for our application to run. So here's an example Docker file. Uh, in this example, we have a local folder named uh, app that contains an HTML page. Our Docker file does the following. First, it starts from the Alpine image, specifically the latest tag. Second, it sets some metadata. This is our name and our contact and a brief description of the container. Third, it updates the package manager and installs Apache. Fourth, it creates the slash app directory inside the container. Uh, fifth, it sets our work directory to be the slash app folder and copies the contents of our website to the slash app folder inside that container. Uh, sixth, it adds a shell file named entrypoint.sh to our root of our container. Seventh, it makes the container listen for connections on port 80, that's HTTP. Uh, eighth, it starts the container by running the entrypoint sh script. And if you see on the right side, the entrypoint sh script uh, just starts the web server in the foreground. So that's a simple Docker file uh, using a lot of those uh, instructions that we covered hope you find it useful and that it helps you to build awesome docker files to create your own images